Hey folks, it's me again. Uh, I wanted to finish up our video series. Um, let me pull up. Ah, here it is. Uh, first of all, this is uh, called, uh, it's the third one, the third video. It's called The Present. And what I mean by the present is th these are some of the tips that I use right now in running my little business. And, um, you know, everybody's different. Every form of gig on Fiverr is different. Every seller delivers them differently. I'm just hoping that maybe you can take a tip away from all this uh, to help you with your business. Okay, having said that, um, <clears throat> I, I have, uh, like, like I mentioned before, I have 28 or something different gigs. Some of them are, you know, uh, active and some of them are just losers and they don't do anything for me and I'll probably throw them, uh, I'll probably delete them one day when I come up with something that's uh, a better idea. Um, but most every one of them is derived from my uh, strengths, uh, my talent, right? Um, or something that I just plain wanted to try because it was a learning experience for me. And so I've been able to grow myself. And, and that's, I think that for me is, is the real benefit of fiber. To me, it's not necessarily work. I look forward to doing it every day. And, uh, and like I said, it's seven days a week, man. If you want to stay up with the work, um, you know, some days you'll only have one order. Some days you'll have no orders. Some days you'll have 10 orders. I, you know, who knows? Um, anyway, so for me, it's been, it's been a, you know, a pretty uh, exciting, I guess, you know, fun, frustrating, horrible. Yeah, it's been all of those. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna give you about 15 items here. And forgive my dress, I've been out working in the yard. Uh, <clears throat> number one is handling your orders. Uh, the way that uh, I have found that one of the tricks for handling orders is to look at the order from the buyer's perspective. All right. Now I've been on Fiverr for a couple of years, obviously, so uh, I've had a lot of experience at this. But what I mean from that is consider the buyer. He may be placing his very first order on Fiverr with you and doesn't know what the heck he's doing. There are a lot of people out there that simply do not know how Fiverr works and so you have to be really patient with them. Uh, I have had orders that were so goofy and so poorly written in English that I had to actually uh, spend a lot of time uh, interpreting what they were trying to say, writing back to them and saying, is this what you're trying to say? Because I don't understand you. And so uh, when it comes to handling your orders, you need to uh, make sure that you do it with a certain um, tact and finesse. Uh, you don't want to be curt and matter of fact with people. They're looking for a friendly uh, voice on the other end. I hope this makes sense. Um, second thing I want to talk about is rejections. Uh, every <clears throat> Fiverr seller knows about rejections. Um, I myself, <laughs> I'm very sensitive and uh, for me to get a rejection is a personal insult, you know? I mean, it's almost that bad for me. Uh, my suggestion, of course, is that handling rejections is really important because uh, you can either make a lifelong enemy uh, or you can uh, make a lifelong friend just by the way you handle the uh, rejection and, uh, you know, or modification, let's call it that, you know, revision. A lot of people, <clears throat> I've always considered about 5% of the population of the planet to be totally insane. 
and a lot of those people find their way to fiber okay it's just the way things are and uh, they they are troublemakers and no matter what you do for them they're angry they're upset they're ticked off at the world and you just happen to be in their way that day and so uh you know what i i i tell you i i just kiss up to them as best i can um you know i i try to say it as nicely as possible i always 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 stick to my principles and my policies uh, but i say it in a way that is as kind uh as possible you know i say things like oh i see that you're that Oh, oh, it appears as though you're upset. I got, I, I did one today. Uh, the guy was very upset. And um, I said, I said, gee, it looks like you're upset. I'm sorry if I have offended you, uh, but here's what I can do, blah, blah, blah. And the guy wrote back and he, he was all over himself apologizing. He says, oh, I didn't mean to, to be such a, uh, you know, a mean person. Uh, I should be horsewhipped. That's what he said. And uh, he said, I, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'm a lawyer and I just write uh, crudely and matter of fact and that kind of thing. So, uh, and I've gotten, you know, many of those where people call back, uh, write back and they apologize that, that they came across that way because most people are looking for a fight when they do that. And if you get into that fight, uh, you're only going to exacerbate the problem. Okay. That's a rejections. Always be the nice guy, but always stick to your principles. Um, I have a uh, one revision policy. That's my policy. You know, I write it down on all of the offers. If you look at my offers, uh, one free modification, no refunds. I say that on everything uh, because, uh, frankly, you can spend your life in the modification era people will drag you through it oh well, could you could you comb your hair a different way uh could you change that stuff behind you could you write and put a period right here you know come on man you get one free modification for five dollars right move along i got another one to do any anyway that <laughs> you can see i get very frustrated about that uh number three conflicts when you have a conflict like i was saying earlier always apologize always say oh gee i'm so sorry come across uh like you know it's all your fault even though it may not be it's all your fault and then explain to them what they did wrong uh very often it is the buyer yes 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 it is the buyer we all know that because they don't know what they're doing i mean we do this all day long or you know maybe an hour a day or whatever and uh they are just jumping online trying to find something cheap uh, and so we just make it easy for them easy for ourselves conflicts are bound to arise if you um, find that the person is being unreasonable um, contact fiber support they will help you through it uh, most often now they will give you the canned response right uh, oh, see if you can work with the buyer, blah, blah, blah. I've gotten a thousand of those. Uh, and those are pretty much worthless because you've pretty much done that by the time you got to fiber support. Um, but if you keep documenting everything in your conversations back and forth with the buyer, fiber support will have a record of everything y'all have talked about. Then they can see that the buyer is being a little crazy and they can be crazy you know it's not just you don't they <laughs> I think it's just you uh, anyway conflicts will arise uh, try to use a little um, a little patience and a little tact and uh, fiber support and you'll get through it and remember always stick to your policies have a policy in place um, Number four, pre-written responses. 
Yay! I love these. I used to have these on a sheet of paper, uh, a doc, a Word doc, right? And I'd copy them off and paste them in the response and send it out to the uh, buyer. But now uh, they're all pre-written responses and I just have them written in there and I just select the one I want. It's uh, a time saver and it can help you to stick to your policy rather than trying to handle each buyer as a special case. They're not all special. Uh, you know, they're just buyers looking for information, trying to figure this Fiverr thing out. And it can be very complicated. Okay, so use the pre-written responses. Uh, you can look through mine. Uh, well, I guess you don't have access to mine. Um, but, the, <laughs> but there are a lot of them. Uh, that uh, you should always have, you know, like, uh, uh, thanks for your order, I'll, I'll be responding shortly. That's, that's a pre-written pre pre, uh, written response. You can click that, send that to the buyer, and then the buyer goes, oh, I got a response. It's almost like having a uh, 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 autoresponder, uh, which is a good idea. Fiverr should think about that. Um, but uh, the responses are uh, a big advantage. Take advantage of that. Uh, number five, time off work. Yay! Fiverr does not give you any time off work. It's a seven day, 24 hour a day job. Um, I work on my computer because I'm also a, a web designer and a, um, you know, I do other stuff for people. I do SEO, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm on my computer a lot. And so Fiverr is like there, you know, all the time because there's a window open. And even though I may not have work to do, um, I'm still at my computer. Number five is taking time off work, right? Okay, here's, here's what uh, you can do. There is a vacation mode in Fiverr that allows you to uh, take a vacation. Now, I, it's because I'm a top rated seller and I'm, I'm, I've got that top, you know, seller rating, whatever that is. Um, I don't know if it's the same for beginners or not, um, but we can now, due to uh, Fiber's new policy, is we can take, use that vacation mode as long as we want. I didn't know that. Uh, up until last month, I had been taking my vacation time in little bits uh, because what the vacation mode does, as you may know, is it just pauses all of your gigs until you come back. And it used to be that you could only put it in for, you know, uh, 30 days per year. That was it. And now I understand you can go indefinitely. You don't want to go indefinitely because it may affect your ranking in the uh, Fiverr engine. Uh, obviously, since we don't do advertising on Fiverr, uh, our ranking depends upon our uh, uh, their algorithm. Uh, you know, your 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 rating uh, level one, two, or three. Uh, your uh, activity, how busy you are. Um, your response time to your buyer. There's a whole lot of things that go into that algorithm. Taking time off work uh, pauses your gig and uh, hurts your statistics. From what I understand, I could be wrong, uh, as far as getting your ranking up and being visible to the buyer when they search for your category. Okay, so uh, I try to take no more off than a, a week at a time, and uh, I try to do that as uh, you know as seldom as possible. Now, some people like to take weekends off. Every weekend they want to take off. I don't know how to do that except that you have to really get all of your orders out on Friday night, and uh, <clears throat> you know, frankly, I'm not sure I want to work that hard. If I've got you know several gigs that are going to take me three days to do, I don't know that I want to do them all in one day. So I work on the weekends, uh, you know, if I have a gig in the uh, queue. Now here's another tip that you probably don't know: uh, when people look at your gig offerings, 
there is a, a little uh, piece of information on that screen and it says uh, four gigs in the queue right two gigs in the queue 200 gigs in the queue whatever it is um, I think they still have that feature if you don't have any gigs in the queue it looks like nobody's buying your stuff so if you've got now this is complicated if you've got a four-day queue and you've got four gigs to do yes you could do them all in one day and then your your uh, information would show that you have an empty queue for the next three days buyers coming to your gig offering will see that on the second day on the first day they go wow he's got four gigs in the queue he must be popular on the second day if you've done them all they go well this guy he's not popular at all he has no gigs so what I do if I've got four gigs and my clock is set up appropriately the purchase times are set up appropriately I will do one per day even though I could do them all in one day because I want orders I want that statistic to show that I am a busy busy person people like to work with busy people it shows success so uh, keep that I don't know if you'll ever hear that anywhere else okay um, number six answering messages um, I like to answer my messages uh, right now and that's one of the reasons I uh, that while I'm at work doing my other job I like to keep my Fiverr window open so I can see if anybody's trying to reach me if they try to reach me and they ask me a question I respond right now because there's nothing better at Fiverr than getting somebody to respond right now uh, it makes it seem like wow this guy's at work he's doing his job I know I can depend on him um, otherwise if they sit there for six hours they've already sent it off to five other people as well as you know there are four million people doing this on Fiverr so so uh, respond as fast as you can um, always answer politely thank them for their interest um, and the signature I love the signature um, I had one of my pre-made responses is my signature uh, you know banjo man 15 offering you the best and blah 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 and it goes you know it it just goes over my resume a little bit and it talks about my education my experience on Fiverr uh, how many sales I've made that kind of thing you know and it 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 almost doesn't matter what you say in that signature as long as you have the signature you know the post comment after your uh, message to them so use that that's really important um, number seven protecting your income uh, PayPal and passwords and this is important several times uh, in my experience in Fiverr I have run into people who have had their accounts wiped out by thieves that somehow I don't know how this happened but somehow the thieves got wind of their password into their PayPal account now you know they could be just blaming it on Fiverr uh, they could just be blaming it on their buyers they could you know it could be a freaking lie for all I know but what I did um, I found I, I thought about it and I said you know I keep my uh, you know my money my money goes from Fiverr to PayPal right then from PayPal into uh, my bank account and so it's 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 a little holding place I don't keep much in there uh, you know maybe a couple of dollars but the important thing is that you set up a, uh, a PayPal uh, account that is not tied to your email that you would be using in Fiverr or that anybody can trace you back and find your email address okay use a separate one for PayPal don't ever tell anybody what that PayPal address is 
uh, much less, much less what your passwords are. Um, a lot of people, uh, some, some of the theft has been tied to uh, uh, email. The people uh, somehow got the seller to email them rather than go through the Fiverr portal. Never email directly. Never. It's against terms of service, first of all. Secondly, terms of service are there for your protection. I know this to be true, okay? Um, we used to think that it was Fiverr's way of keeping us under control so that we wouldn't buy and sell outside of Fiverr. Yeah, that's probably part of it. But now I realize the value of going directly through the Fiverr portal. Very important. Uh, Fiverr has uh, ways of finding out who the crooks are sometimes. And they will, this is wonderful. What they'll do is they'll contact me uh, ahead of time. And they'll say, uh, we've seen some trouble on this account, so we're closing this account. Before I even do the work, now I've taken the order, I haven't gotten the money because I haven't done the work yet, but they'll give me a heads up, they'll shut his account down and tell me to stop what I'm doing. Uh, that is really so wonderful. And uh, so anyway, okay, there, the big tip, protect your income, separate PayPal account, uh, separate uh email account if you can don't use your same uh moniker you know your 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 online name don't use that if that's what you go by elsewhere and um you know just be smart about it think before you do <laughs> i don't know if that helps at all uh number eight is tied to this your personal identity Never, 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 never use your real name uh, or your uh, real hometown when you're doing uh, videos or anything that would por that would uh, portray your identity across to the internet. Now, I use my real name is Chuck, and I use that when I am dealing with buyers. Okay, because this just that's my name. I use it, Chuck. But when I create a video and I have to do a testimonial or a product endorsement or something like that, which I do sometimes, uh, I don't use my real name. I use George. And uh, it's important for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I don't want some stranger who I've never dealt with that lives in Arizona somewhere to track my name down somehow and then call me up on the phone and I've had them do that let me tell you it's there's nothing more uh, disturbing than have a total stranger say that hey we saw your video online where you were uh, endorsing a deodorant and we would like to call you on the phone uh, or they've even called me on the phone uh, yeah we wanted to talk to you about that oh we wanted to, this happened one time a guy called me up and says hey we wanted to talk to you about this uh um what was it an rv dealer or something like that uh to see if he's really legit we're about to buy an rv from him and i went what i didn't even remember doing the video and I thought, oh, this is weird because I never use my real name. Somehow they caught, tracked me down. Don't do that. Always be, uh, always use an alias. Don't ever use your real name. I hope that makes sense. Okay, uh, number nine, Fiverr support. Can't say enough good things about these guys. They don't always do what I want, but they're always doing something. And, you know, I, I, I'm the last person in the world that will tell you that I know everything about how Fiverr should be run. These guys are looking at it from a much higher position. They're looking at the big picture. Uh, I'm just trying to run my little, you know, script writing and guitar playing gig, you know, <laughs> look at me. Um, and I have problems with sometimes their policies. I, I do, I do. And, uh, but you know, in the long run, I think it always works. Uh, be nice to them. Don't, try to push a Fiverr support agent around, you will live to regret it. Uh, they are there to help you. 
Um, you know, I, I, that makes sense, doesn't it? You know, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Um, number 10, email, phone calls, and direct payments. Oh, gosh, I think we've gone over this. Never, ever, ever give anybody your email address. On, if it's fiber related, don't do it. Phone calls. Do not ever accept a phone call if it has anything to do with a Fiverr gig. Okay? Don't give them your phone number. Don't do it. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, direct payments. Uh, don't accept direct payments. Now, email, phone calls, and direct payments are all against Fiverr's terms of service. And there's reasons for all that. Uh, it may seem like a good idea at the time. It's not a good idea at the time. Now, I do exceed uh, the Fiverr 150 gig, 150 megabyte limit, whatever it is. It's, it's too small, whatever it is, uh, for sending video files back to the buyer. And uh, so I will have to use Dropbox for that. And uh, that is a problem that has been in existence at Fiverr since day one. Uh, so you have to figure out a workaround on that. And Fiverr support knows that, they know it. And uh, it's just one of those things. Um, let's see, I was thinking about some. I, I'll think of it. Number 11, idiots. Da, 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 da. There are so many idiots out there. 5% of the world is absolutely insane and should be locked up, okay? We know that. Uh, the, you know, then there's another 20 or 50% that's absolute idiots. They will cause you a lot of trouble. And we've talked about these guys already. Just be nice, be nice. I know it's gonna hurt you to be nice. It hurts me. And um, there are people that will, will uh, get on your last nerve, right? And they will push you to the limit. Um, be uh, responsive, be polite, and always, always stick to your policy. Uh, if you start coming off your policy, you're gonna end up either having a brand new policy tomorrow, uh, or you're gonna regret it somehow. And uh, yeah, policies change. You know, you may find that, that, you know, your policy is, I will never respond within 24 hours. And then you may find out, well, you know, maybe I will respond, you know, in, in 30 minutes. Uh, you know, those things can change. It, it's from your experience over the years of being at Fiverr. <sighs> anyway, uh, idiots, yeah, they, they, they drive me crazy, but God bless their little heads. Uh, number 12, ratings tips for keeping a five-star rating all right when somebody and this is this is kind of complicated so I'm going to try to explain this from my perspective ratings are uh, everything at Fiverr if you keep a five-star rating uh, your uh, stats are better for being found quicker okay simple if your uh, buyer is giving you a hard time, uh, well, let me go back. When I send my order to a buyer, I write a letter to them. It's a short letter. And it doesn't talk about, hey, I gave you your, your order. Oh, gee, I hope you like it, blah, blah, blah. Right? Well, that's all important. But what's more important to me they get the order. They know they got the order. That's not, that's not what I need to write about. What I need to write about is how I want them to respond to that order. And I tell them exactly what to do. Uh, you know, um, thank you for your order. Number one, protect your five-star buyer rating. Now, buyers are being rated at Fiverr. And Fiverr, from what I understand, I could be wrong, but I understand that Fiverr is in the process and has been for years of trying to figure out, trying how to rate the buyers so that the buyers uh, will have an advantage over other buyers. Okay? I don't know how that's going to play out, but what I have done is when I send a letter back to the buyer, 
I tell the buyer, protect your five-star rating. And these are the benefits that you're going to get with a five-star rating. Uh, you know, discounts, uh, free items, you know, free promotional items from Fiverr, you know, stuff like that. And then uh, I tell them that they will not be able to enjoy any of those bonuses with less than a five-star rating. And the big kicker is that their rating of me is tied to my rating of them so that they know I'm not trying to be uh, you know d devious about this but I am telling them uh, in, in no uncertain terms that their rating of me determines my rating of them I get to rate last so if they uh, send me a two-star review instead of five then I'm going to give them a one-star review and they know this right up front and so uh, I don't know that it has changed a lot of things for me but but think of the consequences if if or the ramifications anyway if you are a buyer and you see that oh my gosh I didn't know I could get free stuff so I was going to give this guy four and a half stars simply because my principles are so high that I never give five stars to anybody. Okay, let go of that crap, mister. What I'm saying is that I want a five star rating. Give me a five star rating, I'll give you a five star rating. If you don't, I'm giving you less than you gave me. And so their motivation is that, well, gee, if I get five stars, I was going to give him four and a half, but what the heck? I'll give him five just to keep my rating higher. Everybody needs to be motivated. I think that this is a great way to motivate people. And I've worked on that for years, trying to perfect that system. I think that it will pay off uh, wonderfully for you as well. And then, you know, just that's a policy now. That's your new policy. Stick to it. Okay. Um, Number 13, response time. Uh, I think we talked about that already. Uh, respond to a first contact as quickly as possible. Uh, you see the little clock that's beside the message on the Fiverr portal. That clock means something. You're being, you're being watched. Fiverr's watching you. So uh, try to respond quickly. Um, don't, uh, 14. Here's a good one. 14. Do not look at other people's success. There are friends of mine um, at Fiverr who make uh, $100,000 a year selling little tiny $5 gigs. How is that even possible? Every time I hear from uh, these people, um, it just it just irritates the living crap out of me you know I mean I don't make hardly nothing compared to what that those people are making and there are a lot of them that do it and so it's important for me to look at myself my talents my gigs my services my quality of delivery and realize that this is for me that's that's for those guys over there you know they're doing a whole different scenario than I'm doing you know they don't do my videos or script writing or guitar playing and granted their market is much much bigger than mine uh, but they make a hundred thousand dollars a year I am stunned when I see those kinds of figures because it's it I don't even know what a hundred thousand dollars looks like uh, so anyway, uh, that is 14 tips on the present. Uh, now, two or three of these that I gave you, uh, you simply will not find anywhere else. Uh, they're my inventions, my inventions. They're my creations uh, as far as how I run my business. Um, your business, remember this, this is so important. Your business is your business. Don't let other people tell you how to run your business. Um, 
that's what being self-employed is all about and I wish you the very best and uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you later. All right, bye for now.